Daniel Jones got his bag and Saquon got the tag. So I want to hear how the fan base feels about the DJ deal and the Saquon tag. He is the voice of Big Blue. He's a man of the people. He's license plate guy, a.k.a. Joe Ruback. Joe, I didn't mean to throw your government name out there. I see you've been putting out fires on Twitter all morning. So I want to hear what's Big Blue's response to the Daniel Jones deal, too high, too low, or the right price? Yeah, hey, look, man, there are two camps. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I love it. There are, there are two camps here, okay? The ones that believe Daniel Jones can deliver on his big bag to the Super Bowl, and there's the ones that were hating on Joe Shane for even talking to him about the bag. Uh, I believe that they, they did the right thing here. The Giants have a very team-friendly, in my mind, contract that uh, both sides signed. I mean, if you really break it down for the for the football fans that only want to see the four number, only want to see the 160 number, and you really could break it down by looking at it two years, 94 million after that big signing bonus, and you could bail out after two. I mean, I, I certainly don't want to look at it that way because I want the guy to be here for four, going into a third contract with a chip already on his shoulder and maybe maybe a Super Bowl or two. But I loved it. I continue to love it. The only thing I'm upset about, I can't believe the amount of love loss for both Shane and Jones during this process. But I guess, you know, fans will be fans. Just like that. You know how Giants Twitter gets from time to time. So fans will be fans. Let's talk about Saquon because he got the non-exclusive tag. What are your thoughts and the fan base's thoughts on the 2-6 situation? I think we all knew that that was going to happen. Uh, at least I did because, you know, I was very confident that Jones would sign a long term. Come on, man. That just gives the Giants uh, some time to talk long term with Barkley. And I believe that's going to happen as well. You know, for what I heard, the numbers are, you know, 13, a little bit north of that. And uh, and hopefully it will it will boil down to whether Barkley's camp, you know, wants to uh, – wants to take whatever guaranteed money is out there because, unfortunately, it's not all going to be guaranteed. No, nah, and especially when you're talking about a running back, I just hope that throughout the course of the, the long-term negotiations, there's no love lost there because he's a guy that you definitely want in that locker room. Uh, let's talk about free agency. We're about a week away. I need you to fill in the blanks. Joe Shane wins free agency if he addresses what positions and why. Yeah, great, great question there. I mean, look, uh, you know, Giants have the youngest, one of the youngest teams of the, in the NFL, if not the youngest. And they're getting rid of Galladay, and that's going to save, what, $6.7 mm -hmm. So I think he wins free agency if he does the right thing. I don't want to sit here and, and tell you we need a wide receiver one, which they do. I don't want to sit here and tell you they need a big-time linebacker which they do. I don't want to sit here and tell you that they need to secure the interior line, which they do. So Shane's got a lot of work ahead of him. The Giants have some holes, but I honestly believe that this guy and company, they're going to get it done. He's going to win free agency by doing what he wants to do. Ah, I love the way you say that. It's spoken like a true politician. I love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Joe, uh, thanks for joining us, my man. I love it, man. And let me tell you something. Go Giants, baby. I'm so happy right now. They're going to go win a chip. <laughs>